Hexomino facts when? Amazing video, do one with Hexomino's pulse. How about Hexomino's? What about Hexomino's? Do a Hexomino video and I'll improve my life schedule. Great video, I'd love to see one I on Hexomino's. I wish the sequel will they be have all the goodies Hexomino, Hexomino facts and more. Hexomino facts. Can you do Hexomino facts? Can you do Hexomino facts? Can you do it with all the facts? It's very cool. Hexomino facts. What about Hexomino facts? Huh, it seems like a lot of you want a sequel. And you know what? Who am I to deny that? So to answer your question, yes. And that time is now. Hexomino facts. Here are some disclaimers. Okay, go. First off, what is a hexomino? Well, this is a pentomino. A hexomino is a pentomino with one additional cell added to it. Six cells instead of five. Diagonals are still not allowed. While there are only 12 pentominoes, there are a grand total of 35 hexominoes, which is more than the number of letters in the alphabet. Unlike the pentominoes, hexominoes don't really have agreed upon names. There are a handful of different ideas out there for naming schemes, such as Jan Miseles, and plenty more that other people have also come up with, but for the purposes of this video, I decided to make my own naming scheme, based on what each of them resembles to me. I debated doing other systems, but I figured going super technical would be really, really annoying for this video, and none of the already existing systems felt perfectly right to me. That is to say that this is not an official naming system for the hexominoes, so you're completely free to make up your own if you want. Anyways, here are the names of all 35 of them. You don't have to memorize them, though I did. Let's begin! Part 1. Symmetry. 20 out of the 35 hexominoes have no symmetry. Unlike the pentominoes, this is over half of them. 6 of the 35 hexominoes have one axis of symmetry. They are the seesaw, the bracket, top hat, long T, the cross, and the heart. 2 of the 35 hexominoes have one axis of symmetry but diagonal, and those are alpha and fighter jet. Two of the hexominoes have two axes of symmetry, being long I and the box. A total of seven hexominoes have rotational symmetry, all of which are 180 degree rotational symmetry. This includes both hexominoes with two axes of symmetry, then the integral, dollar sign, double N, the hurricane, and a staircase. Just like last time, here's a Venn diagram of symmetry. Any hexominoes that are not on here contain no symmetry whatsoever. So sad. Part 2. Tiling. All 35 hexominoes can tile the plane, and all 35 can do it in an infinite number of ways. I am going to show you exactly how for all of them in increasing levels of difficulty. Obviously, long I and the box are rectangles, so they instantly have an infinite number of tilings. Six more of the hexominoes can have two or more copies joined together to form rectangles, being long L, long P, fighter jet, polar bear, uneven U, and top hat. Just like with the pentominoes, if you can create infinitely long straight lines with hexominoes, then you can shift each row around however much you want, which creates infinite tilings. The majority of hexominoes fall into this category. Hurricane, long Y, Seesaw, long N, and double N can all create infinite rows that are two cells tall. Staircase, bracket, pointer, delta, and heart can all create infinite rows that are three cells tall. Square root, one, three, low four, and golf club can all create infinite rows that are four cells tall. And finally, long F can create infinite rows that are 6 cells tall. The next category is a little bit strange. Let's take the alpha hexomino. While you can't create an infinite straight line with it, you can create these infinitely long rows. With these rows, the top part does line up with the bottom part, so you can connect an infinite number of these rows together. You'd think that this would lead to an infinite number of solutions, right? Well, no, because if you take every row and move it over so it fits again, it's still exactly the same, and everything lines up. What you need to do is have a different arrangement of the same hexomino and line them up. This is row 1, and this is row 2, and then you can mix and match the rows infinitely. 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, etc, etc. The alpha does this, but also the cross, the duck, uneven T, high 4, and the dollar. Moving on to even more complicated tilings, the integral and big L cannot create two separate horizontal lines, but they can create two separate 1 to 1 diagonal lines that perfectly connect together, meaning you can mix and match to your heart's content. Then, these final three hexominoes are the most difficult of them all. Seven creates two separate one to two diagonal rows that can be mixed and matched. This can be a little bit hard to comprehend, but if you look here, you can see both of the separate rows overlaid on top of each other. The hook can create two separate two to two diagonal rows that can be mixed and matched. Once again, this is a little bit hard to visually comprehend, so here are both of them overlaid on top of each other. Finally, long T, which creates two separate three to three diagonal rows that can be mixed and matched. This one is a lot easier to conceptualize, but I'll still show you the version with both overlaid for peace of mind. So yeah, all 35 hexominoes tile the plane in an infinite number of ways. Part 3. Other tilings. Firstly, I slightly lied in the last one. I said that only 6 of the hexominoes can be joined together to form a rectangle, when in actuality, 8 of them can. The only issue is the other two are a little bit more complicated. But anyways, moving on, with 35 hexominoes and 6 cells per hexomino, that leaves a grand total of 210 cells. 
210 is a pretty composite number and can form 8 different sizes of rectangles. Can you create different rectangles with all 35 hexaminos? Unfortunately, the answer is no, it is not possible, but this can be proved pretty easily with parity. Let's take a smaller board, for example, 30 cells. With 30 cells, you can make a handful of different configurations, but in every single one, when you checkerboard it, there's an identical number of black and white cells. This is true for every single even-sized board. There will always be an equal number of black and white cells when you checkerboard it. When you place hexaminos over these cells, there are two options for what happens. Option 1, it covers 3 cells of one color and 3 cells of another color. Option 2, it covers 4 cells of one color and 2 cells of another color. Between these two options, most hexaminos fall into category 1, where no matter where you place them on a checkerboard, they'll cover 3 black cells and 3 white cells. These 24 fall into that group. That leaves 11 hexaminos remaining, which are all the 4-2 pattern. Since the final board needs to have an equal number of black and white cells covered, that means that when you have one of these 11 hexaminos covering 4 white cells and 2 black cells, you need to have another one basically paired up with that one covering 2 black cells and 4 white cells, so that together they combine to cover 6 cells of each color, effectively cancelling each other out. However, with 11 hexaminos in this category, you can only pair up 10 of them into 5 groups, leaving one lone one, which will always have to cover up either 2 black and 4 white, or 4 black and 2 white. This means that one type of cell will always have to have two more than the other type, effectively making it completely impossible to use all 35 hexaminos to create a rectangle. So sad. Part 4. All 210 cells. I'm going to take this category in a slightly different direction than I did in pentomino packs. I've colored all 210 cells of the 35 hexaminos into four different categories. Red cells connect to exactly one other cell in that hexamino. Yellow cells connect to exactly two other cells. Green cells connect to exactly three other cells. And cyan cells connect to exactly four. This comes with several categories of hexaminos. These 13 all contain exactly 2 red cells and 4 yellow cells. They're basically all hexamino snakes as none of them have any branching paths. Another 12 of the hexaminos have 3 red cells, 2 yellow cells, and 1 green cell. These are the hexaminos that are almost a snake but have one cell that branches outwards. For 5 of these 12 hexaminos, that branching green cell is directly in the middle which means the other 2 yellow cells do not border each other. For the other 7, the branching cell connects to 2 red cells, which means both of the yellow cells do border each other. 4 of the hexaminos contain an even split of red, yellow, and green cells, and all 4 of these hexaminos contain exactly 2 instances of the p-pentomino. The pointer and top hat both have their pairs of yellow cells and green cells connected to each other, while the fighter jet and the hurricane have both of theirs in the checkerboard pattern. Then we have category 4, which is only long P and the delta, both of which are 1 red, 1 green, and 4 yellow cells. And finally, category 5, or I guess categories 5 through 8, the lone exceptions. We have cross, with 1 red, 1 cyan, and 1 yellow. The alpha, with 2 red, 3 yellow, and 1 cyan. And finally, the two that are maybe the most interesting. The box contains 4 yellow cells and 2 green cells and is the only hexamino without any red cells. Then, finally, the dollar sign contains 4 red cells and 2 green cells and is the one hexamino without any yellow cells. Part 5. Chemical Formulas So, in pentomino facts, I discussed which tetrominoes are contained in the pentominoes. This time, I'm going to discuss which of the pentominoes are contained in the hexominoes, except I'm doing it with a little bit of a twist. Basically, what this is, is take any hexamino. Take all 6 instances of a cell being removed from that hexamino. Discard whichever instances caused the cells to be split apart. Then, for the remaining ones, take the names of all of these pentominoes, alphabetize them, and then group up duplicates. And there you have your pentomino chemical formula. Every single hexomino has a unique chemical formula, except for the bracket and the integral, which both form L2. Which is kind of cool that there's one exception, but also sucks because this is so close to being a valid naming system for the hexominoes. But that's fine because they get to have more interesting names, like bracket and integral instead. Anyways, here's the chemical formulas for all of them. 13 of them contain 2 pentominoes, i.e. the same 13 that only had 2 red cells in the last part. For 5 of these, it's the same pentomino duplicated twice. For the other 8, it's 2 different pentominoes. 12 of them contain 3 pentominoes, and once again, it's just the same as the 3 red, 2 yellow, 1 green group. 3 of these 12 contain 2 instances of the same pentomino and one of another, aka the only symmetrical ones in this group, where the other 9 contain 3 different pentominoes. 8 of the hexaminos contain 4 pentominoes within them. Only 2 of those 8 contain 4 entirely different pentominoes, being the delta and long p, paired up once again. 3 of them contain 3 different pentominoes, with one pair being doubled up, including fighter jet, pointer, and the cross. The last 3 have 2 pentominoes doubled up, being hurricane, the dollar, and top hat. Then, the alpha is the only one that contains 5 pentominoes, with the f and the p doubled up, alongside a single x, and finally, box contains 6 pentominoes, a whole 4 instances of the p pentomino, and 2 u's. 
I'm going to speed through this next part real quick because otherwise it would take ages, so pause if you want to see everything individually. The X pentomino is in the least number of hexominos, at only 2, followed by the I pentomino, which is only in 4. 2 pentominos are only in 5 hexominos, being the W and the Z. 3 pentominos are in 6 hexominos, being the T, the U, and the V. Jumping up, the P pentomino is in 8 hexominos, most of them multiple times. The F pentomino is in 9 hexominos. The N and the Y pentominos are both in 10 hexominos, and the L pentomino is in the most hexominos at 11. Despite being in the most pentominos, the L pentomino is not the most represented overall, because in most cases, hexominos with the P pentomino contain two P pentominos, which means P shows up the most distinct times in the hexominos, at a grand total of 16 times. Part 6, Drawing Lines Through the Hexominos Out of the 35 hexominos, only 8 of them can have a line drawn through them perfectly, with wiggle room on both ends. They are Long I, Long L, Staircase, 3, Integral, Golf Club, Double N, and Long N. Six of the hexominos can have a line, but it must pass through a specific point. They are Delta, Duck, Long P, Long Y, Hurricane, and 7. Low 4, Fighter Jet, Alpha, Square Root, and Dollar Sign are all locked to 2 or 3 points, which makes only one line possible. Then Bracket, Seesaw, Top Hat, Hook, and Polar Bear are also locked to a single line, except the line exclusively passes through the edges of cells. Finally, these 10 hexominos cannot have a line pass through all of their cells. For six of them, this is obviously because they contain the T pentomino, which, as we learned in pentomino facts, T was the only pentomino where a line passing through it was impossible, so obviously any hexomino that contains it is also impossible. However, there are also four more hexominos that are impossible that do not contain a T pentomino. Those four are uneven U, big L, long F, and heart. Alright, so, we've covered all the facts that were in pentomino facts now, with the exception of pathfinding. So, it should be time for hexomino pathfinding, right? Well, unfortunately no, because I in fact already cover that in my more pentomino pathfinding video. So, if you do want to see what the hexomino pathfinding solutions look like, go watch that video. However, to compensate for not doing that in this video, I have two new sections that should be fun. Part 7. Hexomino Rooms For this part, I will be imagining each hexomino as a room, and the goal is to place a light in the room so that the entire room is illuminated i.e. which parts of the hexomino can you place a point in so that every single other part of that hexomino can draw a direct line to that point without going outside of the borders of the hexomino. In the majority of hexominoes, this is possible. You can put a point somewhere within that hexomino so that every part of the hexomino can connect directly to it. In long I and the box, you can put it anywhere since they're rectangles. Duh. Both top hat and long P have two cells where you can place the light anywhere in that cell and everywhere in that hexomino can connect to it. A lot of hexominos have exactly one cell in which it'll work, 10 in total. Long L, Seesaw, Fighter Jet, Pointer, Alpha, Big L, Cross, Uneven T, Long T, and Long Y. Every other hexomino needs it to be placed in more specific places in order to still illuminate the entire hexomino room. A handful of the hexominos can have the light placed on any point in a straight line. They are Hurricane, whose line passes through two edges, then Delta, Long F, High 4, Low 4, Double N, dollar sign, and long end, which can all be placed on one edge. Then, two of the hexominos are restricted to having the light be placed in a very specific point, being duck and golf club, both of which require it to be right on a corner bordering three cells. The remaining 11 hexominos unfortunately cannot have a light placed in them anywhere in order to illuminate the entire hexomino. However, we can optimize these hexominos in order to find the point within the hexomino to maximize the amount of places within that hexomino that can connect to that light. Of the remaining 11 hexominos, 8 of them can be optimized to place a light so that it can connect to a maximum of 5.5 cells. For Polar Bear, Heart, and the Staircase, you can put this point anywhere on this line and it will connect to 5 cells and half of another cell. For instance, if you put it directly on the edge of either side of this line, then you can cut off a nice clean half cell on the other end. But if you put it in the middle of the line, it cuts off two equal quarters from both of these cells. Then, in the 7 hexomino, you can place it in two separate points, and either of these points cuts off half of a different cell. 3, uneven U, square root, and 1 all require it to be in a very specific point in a very specific corner so that it cuts off exactly half of a cell. 3 hexominos remain, and all 3 of them can have it placed in a specific point so that 5 and 1 quarter cell are illuminated. Integral and bracket can have the light placed in either of these two points, and it will cut off 3 quarters of a cell. And finally, the most constrained of them all, Hook, which requires the light to be placed in this specific spot, which cuts off half a cell here, and then another quarter of a cell here. Woo! Part 8. Cubes With 6 cells, we can now make cubes with the hexominos. 
We can also make a lot of other weird shapes too. But first, let's just... That's better. For this specific section, let's assume that every single border of any cell that is between two hexominoes folds 90 degrees, and let's see what shapes we get. Well, firstly, any hexomino that contains an O-tetromino is physically impossible to fold without either bending one of the cells or space-time reality itself. That means these eight hexominoes are completely unable to fold whatsoever. When you try to fold them, they just become completely incomprehensible shapes. The only way you would be able to fold them would be to cut one of these four sides and have the two cells whose border you cut overlap, but even then they clearly don't make cubes so we can completely discard this. For two of the hexominoes, when you fold each edge, they have two pairs of cells overlap. The long I creates this ring thing with two opposite sides not filled in, while uneven U has the two unfilled sides bordering each other. Next up we have the largest category. 14 of the hexominoes almost create a cube, but have one pair of cells that overlap, which makes their final creation this sort of open chest looking thing. You could probably store a marble in these. Out of the 14, 3 of them have that overlapped cell be the bottom one, and those are hook, polar bear, and bracket. The other 11 all have one of the sides overlapped. Then, the remaining 11 hexominoes do all form valid cubes. You can see pretty easily for these 6 hexominoes, if you have the I tetromino and 2 cells sticking out on either side, the I tetromino creates a ring, and then the other 2 cells cover each exposed half on either side of the ring. For these other 6 hexominoes, it's a little bit harder to tell that they can create a valid cube, but I've come up with an easy to memorize cheat to tell if a hexomino is a valid cube net. When we look at all of the hexominoes that do not form valid cube nets, almost all of them contain at least one of 3 pentominoes. The I pentomino, which is in these 4 hexominoes, the U pentomino, which is in these 6 hexominoes, and the V pentomino, which is in these 6 hexominoes. In fact, we can see that the 2 hexominoes that have 2 overlapped cells both contain 2 instances of band pentominoes, as long I has 2 I's and uneven U has a U and a V. For each of these hexominoes, you'll also always be able to tell which 2 cells overlap, as in all 3 cases of U, V, and I, it's the cells on the ends of that pentomino that overlap. If a hexomino contains the U, V, or I pentomino, then it cannot create a valid cube net. If it doesn't, then it most likely creates a valid cube net. There are three exceptions of hexominoes that are not valid cube nets and do not contain U, V, or I pentominoes, and those are bracket, golf club, and long N. In all three of these cases, the two overlapped cells are on the ends of each hexomino. So uh, just remember U, V, I pentominoes and these three hexominoes, I guess. Since I went through all the effort of cutting these all out and making them into shapes, I thought that, of course I had to tape them into actual cubes. Or, well, I taped the 12 hexominoes that form cubes into cubes, and the remaining hexominoes that don't form cubes still got taped into whatever they create. I even did the fucked up hexominoes that don't fold whatsoever, even though they looked like complete garbage, but honestly, being an eldritch monster isn't so bad. Well, that's all the hexomino facts I have. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Do not ask for heptomino facts. There are 108 of them. That sounds like absolute hell to compile. 35 hexominoes was already enough. But yeah. Anyways, I also wanted to announce that I have a Tumblr now, so go follow that if you're interested. I don't really know how to use Tumblr, so we'll see how that goes. You can use it to ask me questions about anything though if you want, and I will probably use it just to post random stuff. I don't know. That's all though. See you later!